This is not an ordinary Linux box. In order to log in, it needs something you have physically. In this video, I will show you how you can add a one-time password to your Linux box to level up the security. But why would you do that? Passwords can be stolen or leaked. This is the same for private keys where it can be hijacked by attackers. So adding another layer of protection can solve those problems. Password is something we know, while multi-factor authentication tokens like an OTP is something we have. In order to set this up on a Linux machine, we will integrate a tool on our SSH configuration. There are many examples in GitHub, but we will use this old tool for demonstration purposes. Since this was created more than a decade ago, there are a lot of things we need to change. First is the version of Python. This only works on older version of Python 2. Second is that the QR code URL no longer exists. Luckily for us, there is this good Samaritan here that fixed those issues. So for the time being, we will just use this script from his PR. Setup is very easy. We just create this file inside user local bin. Then we need to update our SSH configuration to point the force command parameter to that binary. This means that every time a user connects, this command will be run. After that, we need to restart or reload the SSH service. In order to enable the one-time password for our user, we need to do an initial setup. We just copy the QR code URL and paste it in our browser. Then we can open any authenticator app and scan this. I already did this a while ago, that's why you see here it is enabled. But you can just follow the instructions here. After that is done, we can now log into SSH using the normal method. You still need your password as the first level of authentication. Then the next is the OTP. Let's try to enter a wrong code. It failed, which is what we expect. Now, I will enter the code from my authenticator app. It now succeeds, so meaning the setup and configuration worked. Let's analyze how the script works. But before that, we need to understand the core technology used, which is time-based one-time password. Based from Wikipedia, this is an algorithm that generates one-time password using the current time as source of uniqueness. The current Unix time is perfect because it can never be the same. It only moves forward, meaning the value always increment, making it unique. There are two parties involved the authenticate T and the authenticator. You can also think of this as the server and the client. The idea here is that in order to generate the one-time password, we need a shared secret between the server and client. That shared secret is generated during initial setup specifically when we scan the QR code. Once that shared secret is generated, it will be used with the current time to produce a one-time password. That is a high-level overview, but there are more things happening under the hood. For example, the number of durations is computed using this values. Let's have a look at the script to understand more of the mechanics. This is importing several modules. Some of them will definitely be used in generating the shared secret and the one-time passwords. We have a try block here that ensures compatibility with Python 2 and 3. Let's quickly see what are the classes included. We see four which are action, login, setup, and reset. Let's start with the setup class first, since that is one of initial things we need to perform. It tries to see if the shared secret is already created or not. If it cannot find it in the local config, that means setup hasn't been done yet, so the generate method is called. The generate method creates a random 40-byte secret. After generating, it saves it inside the config file. For the purpose of this demo, let's assume the authenticator we are using is Google Auth, since that is one of the most common people are using. There are different ways on how to give that secret to Google Authenticator. One is to type it manually, and another one is to generate a QR code that Google Authenticator can scan to retrieve the secret. To generate a QR code, we first need to build the OTP auth URL containing the secret. Then we will use that generated URL to create a QR code with the help of this site. Once that QR code is generated, we can now scan it using Google Authenticator. There is a base class which contains most of the critical logic of the tool. That class is being inherited by other classes. So let's just focus on the main class to simplify things and avoid confusion. The main class starts by trying to load the OTP configuration file from the user's home directory. Then it contains some utility functions here that will perform the key value pair parsing. Whenever a user logs in and enter the OTP code, the check method will be ran. The server will generate an OTP of its own base from the shared secret. If the code the user got from Google Authenticator is the same as the generated code by the server, then the login is permitted, else it will return false and ask the user to try again. The codes generated are valid only for 30 seconds. Sometimes there might be a slight difference between the clock inside the server and the time inside the phone where Google Authenticator is running. In order to account for that small difference, time drifting is considered. The code generation contains two parts. First, it generates a counter, which ensures the code is unique and only valid once. 
This is based from the current time plus a small amount of allowance or the time drift as we discussed. I think of this as the main random value that is a core ingredient in one time code generation. Once the counter is generated, it will be passed to another logic that will create the actual one time code. It converts the counter into an unsigned long integer format in big Indian order. Then it decodes the shared secret. After that, it generates a Mac digest for the key and counter. Final steps will be to perform some bit manipulation and unpack the code into a four byte integer adding multi-factor authentication for Linux servers levels up the security of your system. In enterprise environments, a more sophisticated tool like HashiCorp Vault can be used. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.